Okay, you're watching this video because you just got handed this plan that says herringbone box and uh, you took a couple flips through these pages and realized, wow, that's a lot to go through. Okay, so I'm going to break this down into a couple of different video segments and uh, we're going to walk you through the construction of this box. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to solve every problem for you, but we're going to go through a lot of it together. Okay, and the first thing I notice when I look at this, there's a lot going on here. It's not just four sides of a box, a top and a bottom. We've got this thing right here that's called a herringbone pattern that makes that V right there. And then we also have these, um, these miter keys that we've put in to reinforce those corner joints. But notice those are also at an angle. Um, I decided to throw that in just to keep it interesting. And then we've got some shaping to do here. Looking at the inside of the box, when you look at this piece here, just one piece, one side piece has a lot of cuts on it. You've got this top rabbit here, you've got a dado cut here for the bottom panel, and you also have this little cut out here that's so the box can open. What I'm going to do actually before we start, because of this assembly being somewhat complex, I'm actually going to get just a piece of scrap wood and we're going to work through the car case construction. Uh, the car case is the, the four sides that make the box. We're going to do that just with scrap. We're going to do every step with scrap wood first and then we're going to transition to this just so you can see the different steps. Okay, so right off the bat I know when I'm looking at my dimensions, I'm going to flip around here until I find one I like. Um, here we go, page one has the length of the box is nine inches by five and a half inches, and I need the height, which is going to be right here, three and three eighths. Okay, so let's see here, nine plus five, that's 14, 15, so I need something at least 15 inches long. That'll do with some extra. And three and three eighths, and you can see where this has been glued together. We're gonna work around those glue pieces, and I've got three and a half there, and just about three and a half there. So I think before I do anything, I'm just gonna go ahead and plane this whole thing down to the total thickness. Okay, so again, I need to look back at my plan and one of these drawings is gonna show me the thickness for the board. Don't just take a board and plane it down to any old thing. You actually need to get the thickness that it's called for. So on page two, I can look at the side piece right here. So again, it's this piece, looking at it from the right side, it's going to show me that it's three quarters of an inch wide. Okay, so that's going to be the thickness right here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plane this down to three quarters of an inch. Before I do that, however, I'm going to get my scraper. We're going to scrape off all this glue so that I don't ruin my blades. And I'm also going to take off the sticker because I don't want that getting stuck in the planer. All right, let's go get a scraper. And we're going to scrape this off. Okay, when I go to the planer, I'm also going to take my combination square with me and I'm going to set this so that the shoulder is right at an inch mark and I'm going to use this to check my thickness every pass through the planer. So right now we are just over seven eighths of an inch. All right, so I've got my measuring tool, got my board, I'm going to turn Jeffrey on. And to the planer we go. Take that up. That was something big. All right. So we got it up to the bar there. We're going to go down eight turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And turn it on. And it's not plugged in. Okay, we're gonna alternate sides, half a turn.
All right, right there. All right, now we need the joiner to make a couple passes there. Look at that. All right, so now we've actually cut a little bit past that line. I think for what we're doing, we're gonna leave that glue joint in because this is just a practice piece. Okay, so now I've got three sides that are square, a face face and an edge. We're gonna put this up against the table saw fence, cut three and three eighths, double check my measurement here. Three and three eighths right there on the fence and we'll have our two side pieces to work from. Okay, over here I'm just going to use the scale right there to set three and three eighths. Got my push stick. Okay, and I want to work around this right here. I don't want those splits in my final product. So we're going to just kind of guess on this part. And then we'll reset the fence to three and three eighths. So I hope I left myself enough. All right, and I did not leave myself enough. So we're gonna come back to this piece in a little bit. Okay, probably shouldn't have cut quite well. Yeah, I think we were gonna have enough out of this board no matter what we did. Okay, so we're gonna put these. This is gonna go on my burn pile. This we can put in red oak and somebody else can use. And this piece here, nobody's gonna use, so we're just gonna cut it and throw it in the burn pile. Okay, so normally I'd have all four of my pieces cut, but we're going to go ahead and start with this one right here. Okay, so I'm looking back at my drawing. We're going to make a front and a side piece. And notice there's two sets of dimensions. This is showing the lid dimensions. This is showing corner to corner is nine inches and five and a half inches. Okay, and we're gonna take, I got that little chunk right there and I've got some snipe from the planer right there. So I'm just gonna make a mark right here. And I'm gonna measure nine inches from there. And to do that, I'm gonna set my ruler on the 10 Measure nine inches. Okay, and this will be the face of it. This will be the outside edge. It's actually going to miter back that way and that way. In fact, let's go ahead and use our combination square and mark that exactly. Okay, and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room for a kerf. And the second one will be five and a half inches. So to by 10 right on the line there, go to five and a half or 15 and a half, depending on how you read it. And again, I'm going to mark my 
my miters. So that becomes the long edge there and there. Okay, now if we're doing this for real, I'd actually have four of these pieces, but this will work right now. And I can go ahead and write on this front. And we're gonna put this as the right. Now let's make that left so that the grain's continuous. All right, we're gonna go to the miter saw now, and we're gonna cut our first two miters. Okay, when you get over here, if you've got sawdust built up, brush that away so we can get a good clean edge on the fence. And we're gonna set our miter saw to 45 degrees, it locks in. I'm also going to lock this. And I always like to hold back just a little bit on the first cut. Make a test cut and look right in there. You can see that there's about a sixteenth of an inch off. So I'm gonna creep that over just a little bit. Something doesn't look right. See how it's not following that line? I'm gonna double check, make sure my bevel's locked in at zero degrees. We're gonna try that one more time. So that bevel is just a little bit off. That's why it's good to draw a line. Don't trust the machine. Okay, now we're gonna flip the miter the other way. This last cut's gonna be tricky because my hand's gonna be close to the blade. We might have to get creative with that. One piece. It's just a tad long. Actually, flip this over this way. Got good fence contact. I'd rather have you working with your hand on the open side of the blade rather than back behind the blade. I don't know if you noticed or not, but this actually fell just a little bit. There's actually a little bit of a bump in here. We need to replace these pieces and figure out what's going on in there. But for now, we now have two pieces of our miter, and because I've marked them, I now know which way it goes up, and so it's gonna to go together like that, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and do this. Make two more just like this, mark them back and right, and we'll pick up from there on our next video.